This 3D render was possible because of a hidden and unknown features in Blender. And it's a cheat code, really. So make yourself comfortable and let me explain how it works and how you can use it too to create your wildest dreams. But before starting, if you want to learn 3D with me for free, click on the link in the description. So, the first thing to do before I can show you this is to find a model to work with. For this project, I needed a skirt that I got for free on BlendSwap. BlendSwap is a website where you can find a lot of 3D models for free for commercial projects or non-commercial ones. Go check it out. On it, I found this skirt, but the topology was completely messed up. And if you don't know what is the topology, it's just how the faces, edges and vertices are arranged together. For this famous cheat code to work, you need to have a clean topology. Clean means to have only faces with four vertices. For this, I use a software called Instance Mesh. And I created a small add-on that let me use it directly from Blender. By the way, all the major topology tools, in fact, under the hood, use this tool. So why pay some things that we can have for free? Because yes, Instance Mesh is free and open source. The link is in the description. Well, my add-on is really simple to use. I just need to choose the faces number and push the button. And there you have it, a skull with a clean topology. And so I will finally be able to show you this video subject, what you are waiting for since the beginning, the hidden feature of Blender. Actually, the feature seems to be hidden because it's a solution that combines two really well-known actions in Blender. The first one that you may know is the Sculpt Workspace. If you don't know what it is, it's a solution to deform vertices with some brushes and not vertex by vertex, like we can do in the classical edit mode. So you can use brushes to deform vertex group easily and more intuitively. The problem with this is that if you want to sculpt something precise, you quickly need a lot of vertices. And I mean a lot, lot. And that's why Blender created something called Dintopo that lets you create more points in real time for each brush stroke. But it's a shitty solution because it gives you a model with a topology that is not usable. You can't deform it, you can't make your UVs, and you can't do anything with it, really. And this is where the method I will show you shines. In fact, Blender created another tool called the multi-resolution. It's a modifier that will subdivide your object creating a uniform topology. By the way, this is why you need to have a topology clean before. This modifier will add faces by layer and will remember each brush stroke that you made on each one of them. This is why it's magical. You get the best of the two worlds. A clean topology with a fast viewport in object mode and a way to sculpt details on millions and millions of faces without Blender crashing on you in Sculpt and run the mode. You get the details keeping the performances and this is the only software in the entire fucking industry that proposes something like this. All the others use something called a displacement bitmap and it's globally a piece of shit. It's because you need to transpose your millions of faces modifications on a black and white image and often your image do not have enough pixels to encode every details. Or you need to have something like 32K in resolution, which is a pain in the ass to work with. Blender is the only one keeping your entire skull details in a modifier without you having to do anything. And so I will show you how I sculpt in my skull to make it more realistic and detailed. Well, all of this is good, but a skull, or whatever 3D asset, is not only a volume or shape, it's also colors. And this is why the next solution I'll show you is interesting. First, to do colors, you need to make your UVs, because I will need to paint some stuff on it. I will paint on it some areas here in white. The different areas will represent different things, like the bones, the dust, the dirt, etc. This is actually like that we work in 3D. Instead of trying to paint all the colors at once, you only paint the areas for the different matters. Here, for example, I'm painting the area for the dirtiness or the grime of my skull. To do this, like I said before, you need UVs. And after, you can simply use the Blender's Texture of Paint tool. 
and I paint until I have this image in black and white that represents where is the dirt and where it is not. That's why this solution is cool. I concentrate myself only on where the different matters are and not on the matter itself. Yet. The matter, I will do it with something else called the shading. Like you guessed it, the shading in any 3D software is a system that lets you create any matters. And to match our mask painting before, we created several ones. One of bone, one of dust, one of dirt, etc. In fact, one by area that we painted. So remember this picture in black and white? The white will show the dirt and the black will show the bones. For the technical part, for this we use a node called the mixed shader. The black will show the first shader and the white the second one. It's that easy. So, this is really good. We have our skull with some matters and colors, but this is still ugly because it's not lighted. And to have a good render, you need to have coherent lighting. This project sequence happened on an alien planet, really far away in the galaxy. So there is a lot of dust and mist. This is a hostile environment. And so I'll try to recreate this feeling in my lighting. For this, I simply create a directional light and I add a creepy green mood with what's called the world system in Blender. In Blender, the world defines the mood in your scene, if we can say it like this. Once this is done, I've practically finished. I just have to place my camera, animate it, and push the button, render. This project is a small part of a way bigger one that I did for the Punisher challenge called Camscall. So if you want to see it, just click on the top right of your screen. As for me, I'll let you with the first shot finished that show you the skulls that we constructed together. Alright, first of all, congrats for reaching this point. Trust me, you're part of the minority. Now, would you like to go further than a simple tutorial? Having a real course that explain you the basics that are behind a video like this one. Yeah? Okay, so this is what you're gonna do. You're gonna click on the first link in the description to receive an entire six-day course where I explain you how you can create your first movie entirely in Blender. We'll realize together this epic gladiator fight between the evil cube and the dark pyramid. And all of this for free. Yeah, you heard me well, this is totally free, there is no bullshit, and you will be able to apply all the skills you learn in your personal projects. So, let's see you there.